We give all the glories to the Lord. Let us bless each other. Have a peace in your heart. You are the evangelist who will save the world. You will take the land that I promised. Thank you for this glorious song. God loved this world so much that He gave His only Son and the Gospel. And the history tells us that the Jesus is the only answer. If so, then the conclusion of your life is the gospel. So the title for today's message is the conclusion is the gospel. As you know well about this main passage today, that's Matthew Genesis 24. When you read the entire chapter, it's describing the things will hap would happen in the end. Jesus said, surely we have the end. That is right. All of us have each individual ending and the end of the age and end of the earth. Nothing can stop this end of the world. This the answer the answer for this is the only one, the gospel. God gave us this answer the gospel that's why the verse 14 said this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as testimony to all nations and then the end will come as we read this entire chapter and so many things will happen bad things will happen to us but the end will not come because of these two troubles is the beginning of the disasters. When we will face the end, the gospel of the kingdom, when the gospel kingdom is proclaimed to the entire world, then we will face the end. In other words, and the time that we proclaim the kingdom of God, the gospel of kingdom, then we'll the end will come. So the conclusion is the gospel. Each individual have has the their own ending time. So what is the most important is for them when they face the end, money, their fame, their knowledge. Of course, these are good things, but the everything that I mentioned is not the most important thing, but only the gospel. We surely will face the end of the world and the age. And it's the same thing. To the end of the world, to be saved. Only the gospel is there for us. So Jesus Christ came to this earth. God gave his only son for the gospel. So people do not know about this, then they just stick to uh, their standards and their lifestyle. God gave us the gospel. People do not know about this gospel at all. So they are accustomed to with the way they live. So they are used to uh, living like that. So it's like repetitive in all our life. So without knowing this, and they try to see the things in the future, expecting that it's better. Then they end up um, following their standards and their efforts. They're resting in the end. 
Of course, they make efforts to do something, accomplish things. But in the end, they are wrestling in their own standard and thought and efforts. So they face a lot of difficulties while living in this earth. Think about this. Think about your first, the beginning part of your life. Did you plan your first part of your life? No one. No one knows their beginning. I'm sorry to say this. Did you plan to be born with a silver spoon? Want to be born in a very poor family? Nothing is all done with your standard in your thoughts. If it were like this, then you would uh, expect the bigger and the greater things in your life. Without your standard, without your thoughts and efforts, everything happened. That's your life. And the sure thing, the more sure thing is that in the end, you will finish your life when God calls you. Then you must understand the answer that you must not just merely leave. God is God made this world and God is governing this world until now. And if you just follow after his words, then your life will be correct and be easy. And the flow of this era. As long as the flow of this era returns to God, then there is no answer. In other words, if the world turns to returns to the gospel, then nothing is sure. So the conclusion today is the gospel. And verse 13 says, but no one who endures to the end will be saved. And 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Especially today, through this service, that all these church members will remember um, the title, the standard of the gospel last week, and you must grab hold of the covenant this week today and attending this church. Then the moment you grab hold of the title, then you might say that I grab hold of this answer for my problems. So the conclusion is the gospel. So to do so, then the world is moving in accordance with his words. And everything is in accordance with his words. So what is the true happiness in your life? Nothing else but the fact that God is with us. And you know the fact that God is with us. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 29 Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you? A people saved by the Lord, the shield of your health and the sword of your triumph. Your enemies shall come pounding to you, and you shall thread, tread upon their backs. Then he said, happy, happy are you, O Israel. They are happy with salvation receive this salvation like you so we are saved that's why we are happy and what is salvation then the God is with us God is with me that is salvation and through this salvation we are happy Psalm chapter 73 verse 28 but for me it is good to be near God I've made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell you of all your works 
for me, it is good to be near God. That is true that when God is near, there is true happiness. Then to enjoy this happiness, what is the most precious mysteries that you could enjoy this? That is worship. And through this service, we conform and enjoy the blessings that God is with us. And there are prayers and offerings, all the voluntary works in church. But prior to these, then the service itself is your happiness and your true joy. And while praying in the worship service, that is all connected to very important answers. While preparing this worship service, and you prayed before attending this service, and the prayers be just right before the service is connected to the answers and blessings. And all the elders' prayers before the service is all connected to your answers from the Lord. And while worshiping the Lord and we praise His the songs that will heal us. It's not just mere praises. All the praises before the worship service uh, bind up the force of diagnosis that we do not know, we are not aware of, and the heal that are all the physical bodies and the souls. And while worshiping that we give the offerings that the all, which will recover the economy of light. God is with us. Christ is with us. And the worship service that you are with God. So you must enjoy this worship service in the name of Jesus Christ. And Mark chapter 3 verse 14, then God called the disciples to be with him. And the flow of being with him must live a life in accordance with his words. Day by day, moment by moment, you must confirm these blessings. Especially, what is the reason that we keep saying this gospel? Because you do not have anything to say? No, it's not. You have scars in your heart. Even you have scars. No one with the gospel will not perish. You are in failures. Even you are f such a loser. But if you, as long as you have the gospel, you will not fail at all. You, you, th you might think that you are in the midst of disasters, but even with the gospel, even you are in the midst of troubles with the gospel, nobody can stop you. Nobody can destroy you. In fact, we are doomed to die and heading to the destruction. But God saved us out of this troubled. That is the gospel. So we might say this gospel, it might be easy for us to say the gospel, or it might be easy for us to think about the gospel, but the gospel itself, it's totally different from what you think. It's totally different what you expect. That is grace. The fact that we are saved and receive, receive the gospel it is a part that you, even you dig out in your entire life, you cannot find everything, every treasure in your life. That is the gospel. Think about winning the lottery. Many people say that, that you receive so much, so much blessing, but uh, compared to this, if you receive the blessings and the salvation, it cannot be comparable with being a millionaire at once, accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. It's much more than the billionaire with all the treasures in the world. The most blessing is tremendous blessings is receiving the gospel and being saved. 
John chapter 3, verse 16. For God's love to swear so much that we gave, He gave in us whatever believes in Him. We received the salvation once, but tremendous treasures in it. John chapter 3, verse 16. God love for God love this word so much that He gave His only Son. And First John chapter 3, 8, His only Son appeared. And and Romans chapter 1 verse 16, whenever you believe the gospel, then anyone who believes then will receive the salvation. Now he, the Paul, confessed his face that I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And to in this gospel, then you will surely overcome the world, even no matter what kind of problems you face. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Hallelujah. And Romans chapter 8 verse 39 says, All the famines, all the dangers and swords, all the danger before the dangers, we surely overcome these with the gospel. And we surely in the gospel, then all the figures of this living this earth, you will find the true knowledge and wisdom of God and you will receive all the mysteries of God and authority of God because they are within the gospel so Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 says in, um, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge And Jesus is Christ, Jesus is the Christ, and the fact is within the gospel. And to, to praise, to give the, all the praises, the Lord, and want to see the working of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. want to give the evidence of these sort of blessings. The history of the world tells us that the answer is the gospel. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 says the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. They're waiting, revealing. They're waiting for, longing for the revealing of the sons of God. So in accordance with these words, it is such blessings that you live in accordance with these words. And the world is moving in accordance with his words. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven, the heavens and the earth. And John chapter 1 verse 3, All things were made through him. And, made, and the word itself is God. And all things were made through him and through without him was not only thing made that was made then everything all the great all things were created in accordance his will his will and his words first corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 we all know this very well and Jesus came down to this earth in accordance with the scriptures and he lived following the scriptures and then he was buried in accordance with his scriptures and he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. In other words, he ascended to heaven according to his the scriptures. And he will come down to this earth again in accordance with his scriptures. So that is the most gracious that you believe in this fact. And the, the, the 
master of the world. God is controlling the world, and in the throne of God, He is governing our life. How can we know this? You can see this by verse Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus, Jesus will accomplish every part. Uh, not a dot out will not be missed. And still, until now, God is governing your life and controlling your life, and is accomplishing His words in your life. Genesis chapter twenty-one, verse one to three. Abraham gave a birth to Isaac. And the scripture says, and God appeared himself to Abraham, and this time, or this time next year, you will have a son. Then Abraham um, didn't believe it, because by looking at himself and his wife, but God said to Abraham, then you surely have the, a son, and the son through whom all the nations will be blessed. Then Genesis verse 21 verse 1 says, The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. It's all like he like he had spoken to him, and he said to him, as he had said, and he accomplished everything as he said. And in his old age, he gave a birth to a son Isaac. So you must be sure that you are within the gospel, within his words. You get to know, believe his words. That is so much grace that in the end, it's getting worse than in the end, you must get closer to God and everything, nothing is, everything is useless, but only receive God's words. Resolution chapter 1 verse 3, blessed are those who read aloud the words of his prophesy, prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for time is near. And behold, bless the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of his book. Then, according to the Bible, then the gospel, then everything will be accomplished. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And the temple uh, people built up, then they all crumbled down. As he promised, as he prophesied, um, the temple crumbled down. What's the reason that they were destroyed? Why? The first reason is that we didn't read this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Let's look at the Bible. And it was destroyed and cursed, and it was destroyed. Let's read it all together. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hand gathered her breath brought under her wings, and you were not willing? See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see it again and bless those who, who come into the name of the Lord. And they will see that your house is left to you desolate. And 37 said all, He sent all the prophets, but they just stoned them. But Jewish people didn't believe them. Even once they... Um, they didn't accept the prophets that got sent. 
Then 38 says, this your house is left to you, left to you desolate. And one more reason is that as the perfect temple, Jesus came down to this earth, and the, the role of this temple just finished because Jesus came down to this earth. In the Old Testament, how the people, how was pe were people saved? And even in the Old Testament, they believed in Jesus Christ. And people in the Old Testament, they were saved by believing in Jesus Christ. Israel people uh, make, uh, made a lot of rituals and worship the idols. It's not all about the public rituals that they were saved and building up the temple. This, these are all means of being saved, accepting Jesus Christ. They just accepted Jesus Christ as their saviors and they were saved. So Jesus came. Jesus himself came down to this earth. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 12. And he is giving these eternal riches to the Lord. Then he became himself as a um, sacrifice in Hebrews 10, verse 18. Then he just forgive every sins. Then for the sake of our sins, then he became a ransom. So we don't need to give any of um, riches. When um, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 18, where there is forgiveness of these, then there is no longer any offerings for sin. And John chapter 2, verse 19, then Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. By believing Jesus Christ, they were saved. Jesus resurrected from the dead when the story of Uh, the Old Testament and the history, the temple still happened, still hasn't risen up. To, to build up the temple again, then they made a lot of words, but still the temple has not been raised up. That means that the perfect gospel, the Jesus Christ, we must focus on the Jesus Christ itself. From time to time, we find this. Uh, um, we find people uh, just following after this Old Testament, and they try to find their own uh, covenant arts. And the owner of the, the ark, the covenant ark and the temple, then, then it's all done if you grab hold of the covenant and Jesus Christ. But people are fallen into the temptation that they just followed after this um, old rituals in the Old Testament. Not only did it prophesy this, the temple destroyed, in the past all so he prophesied and that the world will put you astray and false prophets prophets will put you in astray losing hold of these true blessings that they'll fall into physical world and they be, they are becoming secular and churches do not gather together. 
that's Hebrew chapter 10, verse 15. So they do not have any spiritual soul in the churches. Only this second Timothy, in the book of Second Timothy, they do not appear themselves as holy. They do not have any power of the Holy Spirit, so they try to peep, um, put all the people astray. They just use their humanism and rationalism, and leading to this destruction. And all some people just proclaim about the socialism. So they will not finish the wars in politically and in their society. And the most important part of this disaster is that it's not the end. That's the beginning of the disasters. So this part, what God really wants us to grab hold of with those famines and disasters and all the troubles. We must not consider this as the end, but the beginning. And the end, in the end, all this, the gospel of the kingdom will spread to the entire nations and to the world. So the conclusion is the gospel. We must grab hold of the gospel only. So when grabbing hold of the gospel, getting into this gospel, or will enjoy the blessings. Secondly, the way to overcome the world in the end we must return to the gospel. And verse 13 says, the one who endures to the end will be saved. Here the chapter 13 verse 8 and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and he is still proclaiming and working on us he worked on us in the past and still working on us present so that's why we are doing this word movement so we are coming to the end then you must run return to the gospel that is the way to overcome the world in the end so no matter what happens the, the gospel is not all tied up to the world. Second Timothy. Second Timothy verse 2 and 9. He was, it's like uh, he became a sinner and he was tied up, to, tied up to this prison physically, but then to this miserable situations, but still his words will not be tied up. Think about the early churches and politically they were persecuted and they just faced all the tro troubles. But do you think that the, the gospel stopped? At chapter 5, Five, verse 45 whether you are at home and in the temples they didn't stop teaching the gospel and evangelizing people so you must be with God and the scriptures after chapter 6 verse 7 and his words be, uh, of God continue to increase and at chapter 19, verse 20, the word of God continued to increase and prevail mightily. Even what happened, even no matter what happened, all the persecutions never stopped them spreading the gospel. Because of this gospel, in the end, and all everything just processed quickly. We are in a very Quick world. What is the reason that God 
give this chance for us to do things quickly because of the gospel. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4 said, Even God let us do this work in a quick way. And with the, the, the people with the gospel will be clear in the end. And people without the gospel, they can't do this really, um, the work of faith. Revolution chapter 22, verse 11 said, Let evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous will do right, and the holy still be holy. You must know this meaning well. And the holy will be holier in the end. But without gospel, people will more people will um, lead to the destruction. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, you know this well, teaching them to observe that all that you have, I have commanded you, that I'm always with you to the end of the age. Acts chapter 8, to the end of the earth, you will receive the power then you will be the witness to the end of the world. Then the end end, you must return to the gospel. Then that is the only way to overcome the world. Let's come to the conclusion. People say that the destruction salvation, between destruction and salvation, if they need to choose, then they need to choose either of them. Importantly, if you do not know the gospel, automatically they just um, have to choose the destruction. And heaven and hell, people do not know about this well. If the person who is aware of this heaven and hell, then the book calls this person will choose the heaven. Salvation and destruction and heaven and hell what is this um, what is this then the guide point of these two things that is the gospel when you finish your life then everything will when we face the end um, everything will disappear and we will join this glorious work like um, new land and new heaven. And it's the, such a blessing that we join this new land and new world. Then while living on this earth, so we also that is also a blessing that we enjoy the throne of God on earth. While enjoying this throne of God, you spread the gospel, you witness the gospel, and you must invite the people, more and more people, to the gospel. Father God, you give this conclusion, the gospel. Then during this week, all the lives will receive the answers, the gospel for themselves. I pray in Jesus' holy, wonderful name. Amen.